what does a software engineer do what is programming why do we need programming in this video i'll be talking about all these things along with basic system architecture of a computer and lot many more details please listen till the end when the computers were designed the early day computers were designed in a very specific way where each of the computer did only a particular task for example a computer to make certain mathematical calculations or a computer to drive a certain equipment finally as the things evolved there was a introduction of general purpose computers during the manufacturing of the computer or the processors the intent in which it will be used is not decided based on the program that is loaded or it is run by the processor it can be repurposed for different tasks and hence the general purpose computers or cpus came into existence and what we use in our phones in our laptops in our pcs or macs all these are general purpose computers on which by programming we can use them for various applications so during the manufacturing of the processor it is not decided what is the intent of using that processor let's look at a simple architecture of a cpu in any cpu that you see you will see a motherboard you will see processor you will see random access memory ram and then you will see secondary memory which is hard disk or ssd then you will see graphics card and this hardware is connected to connected with bunch of input devices and also bunch of output devices when you open any machine you will see this inside this machine say for example this is a cabinet of a cpu what you see here is the processor on this machine you can see the slot for the graphics card through which the output is coming for the display and this is the slot for ram and then in this rack here this is where you have hard disk which is called hdd and this is the power source or smps so whatever is the programming that we are doing that program get stored permanently here in the hard disk and then when you run the program that program get loaded from this part of the computer onto the ram and then the cpu reads those instructions from the ram and runs the program say for example you clicked on a song there is an mp3 song stored in your hard disk and say you imagine you clicked on that song so what happens is from here that mp3 song is being read and that song get opened by an application and the operating system which is also here along with the application to play that song and also the song file it get loaded here in the ram and the cpu here starts with the help of that application start understanding that audio file or that song and based on that it produces the audio output and send it to here the slot or the port audio port the aux port through which that audio output is sent out take an example of printing a file same thing you open the document in a word or excel and you say print what happens is from this hard disk in the ram that application will load and that application will open the file and then finally that file is sent to the printer to the port that is available now among all these components that are connected that you see in a pc which which of these is more expensive so a quick search on internet will you can find from the internet that the processor is the most expensive resource then comes the ram and then comes the hard disk and the graphics card and then eventually network so if you have to see when you write a software when you write a program you need to figure out what is that you are optimizing it for and generally speaking the processor is a most expensive resource 
so this is given more pre the cost of processor is higher hence when you write a program you have to make sure that it is optimized for processing and then cost of ram and then cost of say ssd then hdd and then network since the cost is varying based on what type of hardware what is the complexity in manufacturing it and how how you can utilize them in the pc even the way you write program the way you design software has an impact based on this understanding at a very high level as you might have already learned that the ram is a temporary memory so the memory here is only till you have the power supply so once we have a power supply that is when the ram would work so ram requires continuous power supply for it to work the moment you switch it off whatever is loaded in the ram get lost whereas whatever you store in your hdd or ssd it is permanent if you store a file there it remembers it permanently so when you switch on a computer what is happening is the operating system is present here in the hard disk so when you switch on a computer the operating system and some of its processes they get loaded onto the ram and then your processor starts executing those instructions and that's how you start seeing the ui that you see whether be it your mobile phone pc or a mac so this is a very basic understanding of a pc a computer architecture and what are the different resources involved